Hello, I'm JW. Today we're going to have a look at the uh, DC situation again. Uh, we're going to use a normal AC switch and actually use it on a DC supply. And we're going to do pretty much what we did before with that uh, electric heater. And that heater has two settings, the lower of which is 3.5 amps, which is what we used in the previous demonstration. And it also has a higher setting, which is 7 amps. So we're going to have a go with that as well. And we're going to use a normal switch uh, and we're going to see what happens to it and how many times we can switch it on and off before something catastrophically fails. So here's a quick look at the setup using the same rectifier arrangement as we had uh, in the other video. And it's the same board here. And obviously the heater is going to plug in as before. The only difference is we're going to use this switch here. Now this is a two gang switch but we're only actually using the left hand switch. So just the two wires going in the back there, no connection on the other one. So uh, the plan is we're going to go outside and uh, set up the heater there. And then we can obviously switch on using the switch here. That should be fine but of course when switching off that's fairly likely to cause a fairly substantial arc inside so uh, we'll see what happens with that. Now this is actually a light switch and of course we're using it to power a heater but this isn't a problem because that electric heater has two settings one of which uses about three and a half amps and the other one is about seven amps. This light switch is rated to 10 amps so even on full power that heater is still well within the rating of this 10 amp switch. Of course that's at AC and we're going to be using DC. So this is the switch afterwards. This is the side we used first. Now this does still actually operate. So that was on the 3.5 amp setting there. Um, we only did that a few times. This is the side we did on the 7 amp actual setting. And as you saw in the previous segment, the switch has now actually completely mechanically failed. So it's basically uh, not clicking into either position. So let's open this up and then see what's happened inside. Of course you can't smell this but it smells horribly burnt and disgusting so uh, we can expect to see a fair amount of damage inside. Now I chose these particular switches because they have the screws on the back so we can easily open this up and see inside without having to start cutting stuff open and sort of destroying the place. So take those away. Now this is the side we did on the lower current, three and a half, so let's have a quick look inside there. And we can already see there's a fair amount of damage. On the contact here, uh, see it's completely blackened there. So we can get a closer look on that one. 
So here's two contacts and you see it's significantly blackened there as is the other side that should be a nice smooth uh, pad there and of course we can compare to the other one here because that's obviously one that wasn't used so a shiny one there on the right and you can see the other one there is somewhat blackened and most of the damage has occurred on this uh, other piece here so you see they're completely blackened away and so that's after only a small number of switchings at only about three and a half amps there. So significant damage already. And again, if we carried on using that one, of course, it would have ended up uh, failing. Now let's have a look at this one. And so this one has now failed completely. You can't actually move it to either position correctly. So let's take the screws away from that one. And in this case, we can see the inside is totally uh, blackened up on the top here. And that's obviously not a good sign. And bear in mind if you could see the arc showing through the front of the plastic there. And here's the interior. And this smells absolutely horrendous. It's all uh, horribly charred and whatever. And that's sort of what's left of uh, one of the contacts. See, the whole thing is completely black and it should be actually a brass colour. Let's try and get these other bits out of here. So here's what's left of this one. So this is the actual moving contact with the spring and you see it's totally black and it should be the same brass colour as the piece next to it there. There's the other side which again is completely charred over the top there. And then uh, this one here is the other one and even that's uh, suffered a certain amount of damage because you know, it's just in close proximity to the other. So completely and utterly destroyed and as you saw there they were actually partially melted into the plastic moulding here. So uh, that is now completely wrecked. And again, bearing in mind that was only a fairly small number of switches, or well, switching on and off, so it uh, doesn't take much to actually wreck these things. And although that was at a high current, it's only seven amps. This type of switch is normally rated at uh, 10 amps, and therefore that was still well within the rating of the device. So that's what happens when you use switches designed for AC, and you put DC on them instead. And of course that arc inside uh, quickly destroys the contacts and then as we saw on the uh, right hand switch there actually ends up melting it and causing it to mechanically fail as well. And in this case it failed in the open position but of course it could have just as easily failed closed which means you wouldn't be able to switch off whatever it was attached to it. Now that's it for this time so until next time thanks for watching.